welcome to the Bay Area Urban De Debate League demo debate. I wanted to do this dem demo debate to give you all some um, examples of what to emulate and also um, to give you some awareness of how can debate can help you and how it can put you in positions of uh, power and empowerment and how it can then continue to make you a leader. So today I want to help introduce some of the participants that I have today who will be helping with this demonstration debate. First, I'll go with the affirmative. I'll start with Sophie. Sure, hi everyone, I'm Sophie Martinez. Um, I did debate in high school and then debated with Mathino at uh, Towson University and worked a little bit with the Baltimore Urban Debate League um, and haven't done much debate recently. Um, I now work at the um, Department of Health and Human Services and um, I'm an analyst there, but I think debate has really helped me um, in a lot of ways, even though I, I'm not still very involved with it, um, but just in the tense of making me a better researcher, a more informed citizen just in general. Um, and really the, I think like the super supportive community that I'm still um, super in touch with um, many folks that um, I met with along the way during my debate time who um, still help me out um, to this day. So. And then I'll start with, I guess, the what and see. I don't know who's the win in. Oh, Will, go ahead, Will. Okay, I'm sorry, my bad. I have issues, technical issues. Uh, my name is Willie Johnson. I am a former debater for the New York uh, Urban Debate League, which is currently now the New York City Urban Debate League. I've worked with multiple programs and multiple students across the nation. I'm the current or assistant director at Rutgers University and also the uh, EMS coordinator for the Newark Debate Academy. So debate is really my thing. Uh, I've been doing it since, you know, a freshman in high school, so. And then I'll go with Amy. Hi, um, I am Amy Gorell. I'm a volunteer with the Bay Area Urban Debate League and I'm the current coach for Oakland Technical High School. Um, if you're watching this from the Bay Area Urban Debate League, you may have seen me before, I probably judged you. Um, I, uh, I debated in high school in the state of Virginia all four years. I went to nationals, I did really well. And then I debated also for the University of San Francisco in college. Um, and now I work at the Environmental Protection Agency here in uh, San Francisco. Um, so what does debate mean to me? Um, I mean, it, it means everything. I don't, I volunteer, but it's not my job, but it means it impacts every part of my life, how I communicate, how confident I am. I know that a lot of us uh, face, you know, difficulty in getting people to believe in us or hear us or understand us. And debate means that to me, when I walk into a room and I open my mouth, I know I'm going to be heard. So that's what debate means to me. Mr. Murphy. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Devon Murphy, uh, and I debated in the Jersey Urban Debate League. Um, well, formerly the Jersey Urban Debate League, now known as the North Debate Academy. Um, and I'm currently the assistant director of the North Debate Academy. So uh, hello from the East Coast. Uh, <laughs> uh, I did high debate is important to me because uh, it got me through college. I was unable to pay for school uh, without getting a scholarship, and I got a full scholarship to do debate at Rutgers University, Newark. Um, it also gave me my first job. Um, it helped me with connections to get my next job. Uh, it helped me with connections to set up my resume and all the other things that I need to mature myself in the future. So uh, debate has been quintessential to my growth as a human being. Um, and uh, more importantly, it helped me make connections in my life that I think are the most important to me. The most important of which is my wife, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, uh, happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Murphy. Actually, you, you stole my last argument. Um, so yeah, uh, everyone has spoke about, you know, what debate has done for them. And I'll, you know, repeat and regurgitate the same and ditto. Um, I debated in high school in 2004. Um, and I've debated with an ensemble of people who are part of my debate team, um, from Dominique Bay to Ryan Wash to Aaron Thomas, who are all on my debate team. And Aaron Thomas was my best friend. So much like Mr. Murphy said, he met his, you know, his par partner and significant other in debate, my best friend came from debate. I have a lot of family members who I consider family a part of debate, who are like brothers and sisters to me. And um, people who I look up to who are like mentors to me, people who I've had to lead um, and be mentors for. 
um, and that has helped me become a, a understanding what it means to be um, a person in a role and, and how I can be impactful and to be significant in a positive way in my community. So some of these skills you hear a lot, high schoolers, you're going to hear me throughout the rest of the season tell you, you need to do this, you need to do this, this will help you, this will help you. But you may not know now, but later down the road, without having those skills, you will be less better off. And so please heed um, some of the things that have been um, encouraged for you to participate in this season and for this league for you to do so, um, because it has also helped put me into jobs. This is why I'm here in the Bay Area. I work with the Baltimore Urban Debate League. I work with the Atlanta Urban Debate League, and I work with the Debate, Debate Kansas City, which is my alum um, Urban League, which were, which is where I come from. Where you know my first emergence into the debate arena came, and so yeah, I strongly urge that you take notes in this debate. I'll try to help you um, go along with what's going on. Please take out some pieces of paper. Um, I know some of you are not familiar with the proper way of flowing, but again, this is why me and Amy are here to help guide you along the way to the season, to help you learn how to flow. It's going to be, um, she's been involved with a lot of the league practices that I, that I hold for open division. So this is what we are expecting from you all when engaging in the debate. It's going to help you understand and keep up, and it's going to help you be able to be a better speaker as well. So please um, try to take notes as much as possible, and we'll help guide you along the way on how to do so, okay? All right, um, now that that's all out of the way, we're just gonna get started with the debate. Um, again, we have Amy as the first, um, excuse me, Sophie as the first, affirm first affirmative constructive. Um, Amy will be the second affirmative constructive. They will be uh, supporting the resolution, which is supporting protecting water resources. And then we have the negative. They will then say, you know, this is not what we should be doing. The plan is not going to work, or they're probably going to say the status quo is probably going to, they make the status quo worse. I don't know what they're going to say, particularly um, specifically in those arguments, but that's the job of the negative. Um, and we'll get started um, with, um, in a little bit, let me introduce the negative. Um, Willie will be the first negative constructive, and Devon will be the second negative um, constructive. All right. So, I'm gonna shut off my microphone and I'm gonna give some time for the affirmative. Um, as a person, as the moderator for this, I'll keep the timer, the time. Let me just get a timer. Should use my phone, I guess, so. I'm trying to be old school. I'm trying to keep the battery out. Ah. Sorry, y'all. Production is horrible. Come on, production. All right, I'm gonna use my phone until I can get that out so we don't waste time. Edit this out later, don't worry. Yeah, 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 too. That too. I won't be editing it, but someone from BAUDL will. All right. Um, Eight minutes on the clock. And then Sophie, whenever you are ready. All right, it sounds good. You ready? Oh, really quickly, Sophie, just for um, debate demonstration purposes, just make sure you're kind of very clear on the citations and the tag, all right, for me. Okay, all right. All right. Okay, the advantage is sustainability. Current environmental law is focused only on the needs of humans because it views the environment as the property of humanity, Void 17. Humans have a troubled relationship with ecosystems upon which all life on earth depends. Vital planetary systems, climate, water, and nitrogen are being disrupted. Humanity's ecological footprint is 1.6 Earths. Misuse of nature is rooted in three ideas. First, anthropocentrism. Second is that nature constitutes our property. Third is that we should pursue limitless economic growth. Rights are symbolically and politically powerful. There are proven means of securing progress in the, the way society embraces previously mistreated communities. Protecting the environment is impossible if we assert human superiority and ownership to pursue endless growth. Today's dom dominant culture and legal system are self-destructive. We need to enforce a new set of rights and responsibilities. Rights belong to ecosystems, responsibilities rest with humans. And that structurally tilts environmental law toward human interests, which guarantees destruction of water rights, resources, and the broader en environment, only conferring rights directly to river ecosystems, consistently prioritize protection over unsustainable growth. Sheehan 19. 
Fully implementing existing laws would still fail to ensure a thriving planet because these laws assume we can control the natural world. Consistent with the frame of nature as economic resource, our environmental laws legalize and externalize the impacts of pollution. Human pressure will marginalize waterways needs. Waterways are critical to life itself. Rights-based approach would prioritize protection of water systems through enhanced pollution controls, groundwater regulations, flow assurances, and restor restoration of a rights-based approach extends to the human right of water for basic needs. Research deconstructing natural systems into measurable elements. Such advancements are critical for regulatory standards to reflect nature's rights to health. Waterways should have a voice in policy. A nation or a state could appoint independent expert guardians to speak for the natural systems and represent their interests during the regulatory process and public comment. Water allocation that recognizes nature, nature rights will allocate water to sustain ecological and human populations and only then serve privatization and profit with the remainder. And the anthropocentric property view of nature is an inherent logic that must be challenged directly. The plan allows a managed way out of the infinite growth of mindset, Hawkins 21. Sustainable development has proven unsustainable. More radical strategies move towards ontological plurality of a separate yet supporting ways of addressing contradictions. Moving beyond current paradigm towards a great transformation, degrowth is weak when analyzing the frontiers of extraction. The worst effects of growth can be seen at these frontiers. Dispossessed groups, especially indigenous peoples, bear the brunt of negative externalities. Resource extraction represents the bedrock of global economic growth. The RON's connection to indigenous worldviews and widespread means it's a merit to place in the degrowth playbook. These two movements are mutually supporting and that they target the greatest logics at the center of the current crisis, the need to grow economic activity and anthropocentrism founded on the human nature duality, RON through laws, Connection to culture challenges anthropocentrism as a central logic. Challenging core tenets will be necessary to build a better world in the ruins of modernity. And rivers are key. They're the lifeblood of the earth and river rights set a strong foundation for broad recognition of nature's rights. Agita 20. Legislators and indigenous authorities are increasingly recognizing rights with emphasis on rivers. Legal systems are failing. Legal precedent on rights of nature can offer significant remedy. Legal systems treat rivers as hum human property. Our current economic system incentivizes wanton exploitation to maximize profits. Environmental laws fail to challenge this paradigm. An RON framework allows legal action directly on behalf of rivers. Legislators can help serve ecosystems. The law has always recognized non-legal human, non-human legal persons. If corporations can be persons, there is no reason a river cannot. Courts and legislators around the world have recognized or created bodies that speak on a river's behalf. RON provides a framework for radical action. They establish far-reaching enforceable rights and duties. And an economic system that prioritizes corporate rights over rights of nature guarantees unsustainable growth and collapse. Techno fixes can't solve, only redrawing the boundaries of the economy within biophysical limits can stave off extinction. Big 17. As humanity fast tracks towards the collapse of our planetary systems, we articulate a new economy in balance with natural systems. Recognizing legal rights for ecosystems as a necessary part of placing our economy in an appropriate relationship with the natural order. Endless growth of a finite planet is an impossibility. We must avoid techno-utopianism. All tech must be subject to full life cycle analysis. Subordination of the web of life to the corporate system erodes means of existence on this planet. The current dominant economy is built on endless pollution. Militarism and endless war changing dominant paradigms will require fundamental changes in law. Law is how we make real the dominant values in a society. To succeed as a species will require a new body of law rooted in the inherent legal rights of nature. We must redraw the boundaries of the economy to, to be into line with ecological limits. And ecosystem survival is a prerequisite to human survival and every other impact. Any framework that evaluates nature through human needs guarantees destruction, Schaefer 18. Under the strictest utilitarian view to protect human survival, humans must put nature first. We cannot measure the DNA in terms of human needs. Catastrophic harm to an ecosystem has been justified when cast in terms of short-term economic needs. And independently strong rights of nature will spill over internationally to bolster global water cooperation, preventing water conflicts, Chilton 20. Without rights-based laws, communities trying to protect their water have only Weak legal tools based on maximum acceptable harms. RON helps move from anthropocentrism to biocentrism. Expansiveness of nature's interconnected waterways promote international cooperation. There will be a 40% shortfall in water by 2030, creating urgency to solidify international cooperation. RON laws may help prevent political future political disputes. And water conflicts wreck global stability and go nuclear, Jamail 19. Water insecurity could multiply conflict. Hydropolitical issues, including conflicts, play out in countries with pre-existing tensions escalating into armed conflict. In some places, conflict is practically guaranteed. Water wars could spark nuclear exchanges. And strong rights for nature revolution 
revolutionize international law toward ecocentrism that resolves system systemic slow violence against marginalized people populations and sets a cap on global conflicts that precludes nuclear war the veto 20 international law is anthropocentric there is need for change toward ecocentrism ecocentric law international law would mean environmental global health rules prohibiting force might be reconceptualized the Waganu Agreement included perspective of the river. This contributes to disrupting oppression. It grants participation to indigenous communities. ROM challenge laws that protect the environment for benefiting human beings. Ecological disasters and pandemics are the tip of the iceberg of a long process of destruction called slow violence. That occurs out of sight. Dominant culture and, legal, and the legal system are self-destructive. If we consider the environment as a whole, the quest for peace manifests as ecocentrism. An ecocentric perspective will consider rules on the environment, arguing use of nuclear weapons impact the right to a healthy environment, no, sim no longer a simple human right, but the right of all ecosystems. Systems. These weapons endanger the entirety of the life on the planet. In international law can evolve and embrace the environment. And thus the plan. The United States federal government should designate rivers as a legal persons implemented through a co-management framework. Solvency. Congress should establish legal personhoods for rivers with a framework allowing federal, state, and tribal representation for rivers' interests that's key to sustainability and only possible through federal action. Healy 19. Governments recognize rights of nature by bestowing legal person. In the U.S., individuals who would represent rivers may only sue on a case-by-case -case basis. There is no way for third parties to represent the interests of rivers absent an injury to the third party. States and tribes are limited to claims for economic injuries. The lack of recourse is written into NEPA. NEPA only requires an EIS when the human environment might be affected. If the U.S. were to recognize the rights of nature, rights might grant recognition for due process and equal protection clauses. Ready for crossing. Okay, that's time. So really quickly, just so that I hope y'all stay along with the debate, that was the first affirmative constructive. She tried to address the resolution of how we would, should solve, uh, how can we resolve one of the, how can we, you know, be topical on the topic and they chose to this um, plan to have a rights of nature on rivers and that we should protect rivers and that this idea of rights of nature would help create a new framework for laws, um, uh, a very more sustainable, um, ecological, um, more sound, um, plan, uh, plan of action that I would allow for us to not be damaging to the planet. Um, she's also expressed that when it comes to issues of uh, economic um, oppression, people who are already dealing with other social and cultural issues are more likely to deal with these issues when it comes to um, environmental degradation are impacted more than other folks. Um, and they also talked about their plan would be through a crow management framework vis-a-vis -vis, um, working with Congress um, to set some international president precedents for um, other um, government actions to follow suit. All right, so that was the affir uh, first affirmative constructive. We're gonna go into cross-examination where the second negative constructive, constructive is allowed to ask questions. All right, uh, Sophie, you good? All right. Um, oh wait, I, I don't have my timer set either. Give me a second. <laughs> okay. Um. So, what exactly does the plan do legally? So legally, it would give rights to rivers. So similar to how you know, given rights in the past to corporations, we would be able to give rights to rivers. Who so is that? that Sorry. Uh, no, go ahead. Like, who enforces or upholds those rights? So we would probably need individuals to, to represent rivers in kind of in courts and those sorts of things. So that way they could um, be thinking about in the best interest of the river, kind of separate from, um, you know, corporations or federal government, those sorts of things. So it would have to be individual entities that protect individual waterways, right? Right. I mean, it'd have to be it'd have to be some sort of individual. Yeah. OK, um, that happens in the United States. Um, right. Like, this is all about the United States waterways. Correct. Correct. Your evidence, uh, specifically your impact evidence in the first contention, the Jamail evidence and the DeVito evidence, when they're talking about conflicts going nuclear, both of those pieces of evidence talk about North Africa, Eastern Asia, Mexico, and how those cause conflicts and nuclear weapons. How exactly does the affirmative, which implicates individuals suing and protecting 
United States waterways affect international conflicts uh, between like India, Pakistan, et cetera? Yeah, so through like spillover effects, basically with other countries kind of modeling um, similar p- pathways. So, and also kind of with international law, the US kind of playing a role in international relations. Um, can, can I ask a question about that? Yeah. You said that other nations will model. What what modeling, like, what, what, like if an individual sues because of like lack of water resources in India, why would that stop India and Pakistan from having a conflict? Um, basically, it's that, you know, India would now be looking at uh, river or rights of water differently. So they would be kind of thinking about the, the, the value of the river and the water itself rather than which would help decrease scarcity in general. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, the, if nations are fighting for water resources and can't pay to provide water for their people, how could they pay to have a nuclear conflict? Because war is pretty expensive, right? Right. But I mean, just because you're we're having a climate change issue. So, you know, you can maybe pay for it and always build more nuclears or build more weapons, but you can't build more water. So we need to kind of figure out the way to solve our environmental issues. We've figured out ways to create more weapons, but we haven't figured out ways to so, solve climate change. So really. Just so I'm clear, the most important thing is dealing with and producing international modeling over the environment. Right. That's how we'll deal with conflicts and making sure they don't go nuclear is to like make sure we have international cooperation on the environment. Right. I mean, that's one of the pieces that's important. Right. We also just need internally in the U.S. to, to solve our, cli- okay, our cool. climate issues. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. Cool. Thank you. That's time. All right. So now we're going to get into the first negative constructive. They will lay out um, their position and um, what Will um, Will will do is I'm sure he will have different positions in this particular um, role. Um, So what you want to do, students, is for each different position, you want to take out a piece of paper and then you're going to write all your notes in that one position and then he'll advise you um, when to take notes on the next position um, that he's going for. Um, so before he does that, he'll give you a roadmap. And then based on his roadmap, that's the amount, the sheets amount, of, the amount of sheets you'll need to then take a flow on each sheet. All right. Um, so it's going to be two off in case you can flow K straight down. So students should need two sheets of paper. So there would be two blank sheets. And then under that, that two blank, sh- blank sheets of paper, this is where the 1AC is. I'm going to put that under that and flow the neg arguments with the red pencil, with the red pen on the uh, uh, right next to where he said straight down to the, um, the ne- affirmative side. So I have my affirmative arguments right here, and I'm just going to flow straight down that flow. You good to go? I'm sorry, I'm old, y'all. What's the time? About eight minutes. Okay. I'm just getting the timer. Well, you my age. Don't do that. (laughs) I might be older than you. By like a year. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) First is the state's counter plan. Text, the 50 50 United States should designate rivers as legal persons implemented through a co-management framework. Solvency. That solvency spills up. This ELC in, two, in 2020. Thus, the rights of nature provision of the United States had little impact. However, new, uh, however, the example of New Hampshire suggested that the rights of nature have a moral, ha, may have a moral and political force. Weaker rights of natural laws are also important. They withstand lawsuits and drive changes in legal culture. State uh, constitutions protect environmental rights, appear effective. Uh, effective right, uh, right to nature in Pennsylvania. Uh, states solve leadership and modeling. This is a royal in 16. States engage in the international front, working with other states to share better practices, link programs, and support global agreement. Uh, state leaders, uh, state leaders attend in, uh, international negotiations and share their positive experiences transforming their energy sector while pointing to climate impacts. Governors Brown, in, Insel, and uh, Shulman, uh, and Shumlin participated in Paris. Next off. Federalism Dissent. 
environmental federalism is hanging in the balance. Now the plan sets it into the federal government's favor. This is Edward and 20. Concerns about federalism, environmental law has, has, has persisted. State governments resisted the EPA's effort to force more aggressive regulations. The federal government does too much and crowds out the opportunity for state governments to pursue their own environmental priorities. Federal regulation centralizes much environmental policy decision making. The result is a or is a pervasive judicial uh, judicial mismatch in the federal environmental law, which undermines the effective achievement of environmental policy goals. There is little reason to believe that the tra that transferring responsibility for making choices to Washington D.C. will produce system uh, systematically better results. Federal policy decisions concerns localized problems will actually be worse, and thus made by state officials. Regional differences. Mean that the federal policies will often fail to account for local particulars. The likelihood that one size fits all federal policies operate as a one size fits nobody will only increase over time as environmental pressures experience diminishes returns. And water allocation is the most important area of water federalism. This is Craig and 13. With respect to water states, rights or rights federalism is, a, is most prominent in the area of water rights allocations where the federal government often goes out of its way to preserve state law schemes at, for assigning rights to use water. Next card. Federal water policies trigger broader inquiries into state commerce power, implicate, implicates all states' authority. This is Hofker uh, in 11. State laws restricting the exports of in-state water resources have aroused the Supreme Court's scrutiny. Courts resolve the groundwater is an article of common subject to scrutiny under the, uh, the Commerce Clause. They're struck down a Texas law forbidding the interstate exploitation of groundwater without legislative approval as an impermissible burden on in interstate commerce. Nebraska reciprocal uh, uh, recipro uh, recipro uh, recipro a reciprocal statute failed to pass the test and was found to be an unconstitutional burden or interstate commerce. The decision will has an illicit strategic behavior of state attempting to improve their chances of successfully defending restrictions against constitutional challenges. And federalism is the key to solving warming, solves global spillover by leveling the playing field. This is the uh, Ibitusun and 17. Federal systems of uh, governments are robust, flexible, able to accommodate conflicting local values. When it comes to global war or, or warming, federalism is America's best, last best hope. Any, uh, any Canadian carbon uh, tax on carbon without an equivalent American action would simply kill Canadian jobs. In America's case, federalism and entrepreneurial energy of the private sector have combined to limit the damage inflicted by Washington. Uh, about 30 states have green energy strategies in place. Dozens of mayors vowed to reduce carbon dioxide emissions in the wake of the president's announcement. And climate change causes extinction and turns all scenarios for nuclear war. This is uh, Schaffner, uh, Schaffron in 16. Climate change, climate change endangers the ecosystem, the ecosystem, decline of water and supply, forces migrations, and more frequently the intense disasters will greatly affect a population clusters. Climate-related shock will act as a threat multiplier. Nuclear war possesses the force to destroy life on Earth. Conflict induced by climate change could enhance the chance of nuclear weapons being used, could create fertile breeding grounds for nuclear terrorism, and could feed ambition to require nuclear arms. On to the case page, so pull up the case rule. Federal water management uh, economizes water as resources. The facility, uh, this facilitates indigenous dispossession through physical, epistemic, and ontological violence. This is Wilson in 19. State programs extend power over indigenous people as a process of considerable physical and epistemological and ontological violence as they seek to dispossess indigenous people of their lands and waters, political structures, ontologies, and epistemologies. Marvin Water defined, defined as understanding of a water resources that can be known on owned and exploited ignore social social cultural political relations to water and the ways in which these are shaped through cultural uh, cultural politics this is uh, this abstract of water is closely connected to control by state agencies rendering the nation water visible to central governing agencies contributing to the colonial dispossession of the indigenous people next is no solvency uh a it recreates new Every problem of modern environmental law. This is DARPO in, uh, in 21. 
Do not share the views of the of the uh, rights of nature. It entails a shift in paradigms in the law that has capacity to save the environment. Problems will not be rem uh, remedied by the introducing of new labels in the system still handed, handled by humans. The history of, uh, of the of the history of right of nature shows that in any alternative faces the same challenges. Most importantly, lofty legislation has uh, not adopted to nature of the environment, deferral to economic growth, uh, weak enforcement, and lack of funding for environmental interests. The limiting factors is not that nature does not have right but lack of public support for a radical change the fundamental direction of society will not change b subsequently uh substantial injury requirement this is blake in 17. The purpose of granting personhood is to protect is to protect its court uh is to protect if courts interrupt injured to require substantial injury then rights might not be help, uh, not be helpful uh, not be helpful at all this basically just means that there's no turnover when it comes to the question of the right it is still people determining what to do with the ocean even through legality so that means the act does not solve Next is no limits to growth. Solar energy in the knowledge economy enable uh, enable clean growth and solves climate change better than degrowth. This is uh, Leibert and 18. The earth is not an isolated system. It receives huge energy from the sun. Limits to growth stem, uh, stem from errors in the structures. Jackson published prosperity without growth based on, a fallacy, uh, based on a fallacy. Limiting climate change will require technology scale. Destroying the world economy if, is the very opposite. The, con uh, the contribution of knowledge to growth is the perfect, uh, the perfect uh, uh, retail to, uh, to those who think growth is the same as physical material use. An open economy will, will do a better job of addressing climate change a flow of energy can drive order out of chaos the economy can grow for as long as, as long as there's still sun okay that's time so just to keep you all who are watching just abreast of what's going on in this debate um the first argument was a counter plan so a counter plan is basically an alternative solution to the affirmative and so well, the alternative solution is basically saying that the states should take the action, not the federal government. And they give reasons as to why that would be beneficial. Um, one of the reasons were, you know, it's easier to enforce. Um, you're going to have to get the states involved anyway, so you might as well, you know, go with the states. Um, and then the next argument was um, an argument that said that um, the federal action is kind of a bad action, um, that it's not an advantage for the affirmative, it's actually a disadvantage. And so one of the, some of the arguments here um, are basically that the federal government provides a one size fits all solution. Again, we're already gonna have to, you know, use the states anyway. And, um, you know, these responsibilities are best resolved by the local governments. And so some, those are some of the arguments here. And then the last piece of paper, again, just to help you with the, uh, the debate. So you have two arguments that are starting on new pieces of paper. And then on the affirmative, you have, you know, you're kind of continuing with the debate because they went straight down. And so um, here, there was arguments, uh, particularly uh, on, uh, specific to the case about how, um, Let's see how the affirmative doesn't solve because there's no transference of power. Basically, you're not transferring the power to rights of, uh, to uh, rivers radically. Um, those people who are in power are still in power. Also, um, that with this new labeling of power, basically the economy in terms of conservationists and all these people who um, have a lot of money and business around protecting the environment will be benefited, which, you know, sometimes doesn't always resolve, you know, our real issues when it comes to sustainability and energy resources. And I think there was another argument down at the, at the, at the bottom of the flow about how degrowth is bad, how we need to continue with growth, but what we should do is use cleaner energy resources. And that was one of the last cards there. And so now um, Amy's going to get ready for the affirmative and she's gonna to respond to some of those arguments. We have cross X, right? Oh, and cross X, I'm sorry. And cross X again is just another opportunity to ask questions. Okay, you ready? Yeah, okay. Uh, so for the uh, counter plan, are all states designating rivers as legal persons in the same way? Uh, the argument is that we allow these states to establish a particular protection of rights to do so. So if there is a river that exists in the state, then there will be legal protections. Right. Okay, so it's also probably functionally better because certain states that share rivers can actually co-manage better. 
So the states can kind of decide how they want to how they want to do it. Yeah. Okay. So then, does that mean kind of more conservative states that don't really care as much about climate change are probably going to do less of a have less rights for rivers? Assume, that assume that a these states already don't have uh, climate change efforts in place. Two, those states also don't have particular protections for their river because those that that's a resource of economics for them. Uh, three, that the federal government would do better at it, given that the docket is full. So if that's tr all those things are true, then yeah, you're correct. Okay. Um, so you talk about kind of how uh, clean energy can solve uh, can solve for climate change. How come that hasn't already happened? Uh, because it's a process. Our argument is that like the damaging and like I guess the lack of like particular rights allows for levels of climate change that cannot be resolved by simple technologies. Now this is why innovation is fundamentally better in a better solution, given that the one AC would choose to not innovate and to degrow. So. so in reality, the technology is not at the level to deal with climate change as it is. Innovation is key to that and that it requires growth. So how do we know we're gonna get that innovation before we get the extinction? The same way we don't know who the rivers, who's speaking for the rivers, right? It's like a functionality is that through time and through processing and through working and producing those like same technologies that cleans the air and produce better, uh, uh, better, I guess you can say, results overall, it is a process that will happen. The same way in which like law would have to be justified by humans to protect the river. Uh, our argument is that there are already efforts in the status quo towards the negatives call for uh, better and cleaner technology where there is no effort really on the federal level to do anything to like help in terms of giving rivers more authority or agency. So are you arguing that the current federal efforts to, or efforts in general to make clean energy outweigh the current efforts that are happening, hurting the climate? No, we think those are one and the same. That's legitimately our argument. Okay, so, so, but you're hoping that in the end, kind of fingers crossed, the clean energy will solve, will outweigh. Like, you know, we go chase waterfalls and we don't listen to the rivers apparently. It's like uh, really just a question of what do we do in order to pursue better solutions for the way and the conditions of climate change currently. We think that the states have had better access to it than the federal government given the leniency of the federal government to deal with climate change. We also believe that fundamentally that the app doesn't do anything but produce degrowth, which is bad for innovation. We also don't think that the app does anything to help indigenous people who are speaking uniquely about their relationship to the river and that states are better at handling this because the federal government always puts them on a back burner. Well, I think that's time, right? Yep, that's time. So um, hopefully, you know, you're keeping up with the speeches and know what's going on in the speeches and you're keeping up with the cross sex. Hopefully cross sex, um, the first cross sex gave you more insight into what the affirmative was speaking about. Hopefully um, this next cross sex will give you insight in what the negative was trying to say. And so we're gonna keep the debate going. The next um, person who's gonna be speaking will be the second affirmative constructive. Um, that will be Amy, who's representing the affirmative team. She will also be the roadmap. Yes. I'm going to give them a roadmap. And also, um, I am, um, the negative was nice enough to give us their evidence before the round. Um, so I pulled evidence from the packets that you all have that responded this to the specific things that they said and put it into a document. And I'm going to share that document in the chat with everybody. So now the negative has access to the uh, evidence that I'm about to read. So I put that in the chat if the negative wants to look at it. Um, and I have eight minutes on the clock. Uh, and so the roadmap is going to be, I'm going to give a case overview, I'm going to address the state's counter plan, then I'm going to do the federalism to add, um, and then I'm going to go to case and I'll just follow them down the flow so you can just do the line by line following them. So really quickly, now this is just for flowing purposes, there's two options that debaters usually choose. and. I usually go for my overviews on a separate piece of paper. Some people, and it depends on the type of debate you're having. Sometimes you can put it on the case itself and just put a block where that overview is and continue the line by line flow down. Um, but that's really your choice. Um, and sometimes you can ask, a lot of the judges will ask, so like myself, I'm gonna ask Amy, would you prefer to have it on the aft sheet or would you prefer it on a separate sheet? Um, I, I think whatever is most convenient for you, maybe a separate sheet is what I would recommend. But. Okay, is everybody ready? Okay, eight minutes. 
First, the overview. Climate change is an existential impending disaster that we must collectively face. River rights and rights of nature is an essential step in changing the way in which we interface with our environment and our communities. Extend our entire case. We solve for environmental destruction in essential keystone ecologies and preempt the escalation of desperate water wars. Unlike other climate change solutions and unlike the fear mongering the neg would have you believe, the 1AC offers a managed way out of our current environmental destructive expansionism. Extend our Hawkins 21 card. Even the chance that rights of nature could solve is enough for you to vote AF onto the state's counter plan. First, PERM, do both. The counter plan and the plan are not mutually exclusive actions. Both the state and the federal government can pass legislation at the same time. The PERM is the ideal version because it gives the states the ability to manage their own local environments while still accessing solvency on key federal lands. And the PERM invigor invigorates a model of cooperative federalism with solves best, Hanshaw 17. Since Congress adopted the CWA, state enforcement actions along with civil suits have done much to improve the quality of nation's waters. A key feature of the CWA is a system of cooperative federalism whereby states may voluntarily assume responsibility for enforcement of water pollution control laws. After federal approval, the state environmental permitting and enforcement agency administers the federally approved program within the state's borders with oversight from the EPA. Next. Time frame perm, do the counter plan and then the 1AC after. Since the plans are not mutually exclusive, allowing the states to pass this legislation first circumvents the leak to the federalism disad and solves. States will not be usurped by federal government and the federal government can cover areas where states lack authority and provide essential oversight. Proves the CP is not competitive and you must air AF. Next, counter plan cannot solve independently. First, preemption, state level rights of nature gets struck down and preempted by federal courts. This is Berman 19. Lieber's enactment exceeded the city's authority and was preempted by federal law. Swift preemption illustrates the legal barriers to extending personhood to nature are insurmountable. The Supreme Court's narrow interpretation of constitutional standing requirements preclude citizens from bringing an action alleging direct injury to an ecosystem itself, irrespective of language and le legislation. In environmental enforcement, harm to the environment does not meet standing requirements. Next. Federal lands, they're key to overall environment and only protected by federal standing for nature. This is Shank 21. Start with the federal lands has set an important legal rights based precedent for how we approach and utilize these taxpayer owned lands. Public lands are some of the most exploited and extracted on unsafe lands in America. Lack of transparency and accountability allows mining operators to pollute and discharge excessive damaging effluents into 12,000 miles of American rivers and streams and 180,000 acres of lakes and reservoirs, destroying drinking water supplies and crucial wildlife habitat. It would give Americans freedom to, uh, from harm on those lands, including the harm from water pollution. It is time to add the right of nature. We need legal protections and rights until we have stronger legal foundations for the protection of the natural environment, both will continue to be put in harm's way. Onto the federalism disad. First, cross-apply our counterplan perms here. We solve best for federalism impacts through cooperative federalism, cross-apply Hanshaw 17. This solves best for their impacts. Our time frame perm destroys the link to the disad, so there's no access to impacts either. Next. No link. Procedural fa favoritism is normal means. This is Fishman 2005. Found in federalism is state favoritism in the federal process. Procedural federalism is well entrenched in natural resource law. This reserves a special role for states in the process by which federal government makes environmental decisions. Next, no link. Federal water pollution regulation is a proper use of Commerce Clause authority and distinct from land use and federalism issues. Baumgartner 2005. Water pollution is an aspect of interstate commerce that states cannot effectively manage without federal policy. Water pollution regulations are an essential part of national environmental policy, which the Supreme Court has deemed distinct from traditional state power over land use. States cannot regulate pollution of navigable waters without disturbing the policies of their neighboring states, making it a proper use of Congress's Commerce Clause authority to impose national water pollution control standards. Next, EPA overreach is non-unique, multiple instances, Bosworth 20. The EPA was claiming that the principal consultation was not required. Most states would interpret it as belying reality and demonstrating bad faith. Wheeler, apparently with presidential approval, revoked California's waiver under the Clean Air Act that allowed the state to set higher auto emission standards to combat climate change. This decision was effectively preemptive of those states. There was no prior federalism consultation. State environmental agency officials wrote, we are seriously concerned about the number of unilateral U actions by the US EPA that run counter to the spirit of co cooperative federalism and to the appropriate relationship between the federal government and the states. ECOS respectfully demanded demanded a meeting. Next, turn. Without extensive federal oversight, state enforcement of water regulation fails due to internal politics and state decisions to ignore science. Sechi and McDonald's 2019. This analysis also informs a broader discussion on the effectiveness of decentralized water approaches to water quality management. Further, the lack of coordination and initiatives across the watershed shows continued an abandonment of holistic water shed approaches. Overall, due to lack of targeting and scientific basis for watershed prioritization, it is apparent that the current crop of strategies being effective uh, is not being effective at improving water quality in the watershed. Some states, such as Kentucky, uh, have not spurred any meaningful efforts. A recent development illustrates how the states are largely stalling, ignoring science in the process. On to the case. 
First to answer their Wilson 19 card, turn. Strategic use of policy is necessary to achieve adoption of indigenous water alternatives, Neville 19. Indigenous approaches to reclaiming sovereignty from settler states are challenging the economic foundations of nation states and their domestic and international exchange relationships. Within settler, sta settler states, these changes are being forced through such strategic legal channels. Indigenous nations are revising authority over land and waters, embedding self-governance and co-governance and other models of layered decision-making into the state practice. Next, answer to their DARPO 21 card. I want you to extend our Hawkins 21 card here. Jan DARPO is one professor. She may not agree that rights of nature is an immediate paradigm shift, but that's not what we're arguing either. We're arguing our plan is a managed way out of anthropocentrism with an impact of extinction. This means that we maintain the economy. We don't completely destroy it, but we do encourage degrowth. It's the only way to maintain the economy and our ever impact of extinction outweighs anyway. To answer their Blake 17 card, cross apply our Aguirre 20 card from the sustainability advantage. River rights sets a strong foundation for broad recognition by modeling existing indigenous legal methods. The tenacity of citizen and indigenous organizations in fighting for nature rights means this won't be an issue. Even their card says, quote, might not be very helpful, which is a weak argument to begin with. Indigenous and uh, civilian uh, organizations have proven they will fight for uh, economic or environmental rights. They're going to solve regardless. And we outweigh. Onto the sustainability advantage. Answer to their Liebrick 18 card. I want you to extend our Hawkins 21 card again. Plan provides a managed way out. Degrowth is coming, whether we want it to or not. The question is how much damage is going to be done in the process. Also extend our big 17 card here. Techno fixes cannot solve their corporate propaganda that ensures extinction. Also, transition now is better. Diminishing tech returns means society has already entered in voluntary degrowth. This is Boanati 18. After the financial crisis, despite years of zero interest rates, there are no significant signs of satisfying recovery of the global economy. We are experiencing something different from an ordinary crisis. It is an important step that legitimizes the debate on post-growth. Standard economics lacks evolutionary theory and does not even take into consideration irreversible changes. Innovations are not enough to compensate for the declining returns. Advanced capitalist societies have entered a phase of declining returns or involuntary degrowth in key sectors and detrimental effects on the system's capacity to maintain its framework. Next, water is key to all environments and social resilience breaks down uh, breakdown risks extinction. This is Rockstrom 14. Now that the earth has entered the Anthropocene era in which humanity constitutes a force of change on a planetary scale, the world faces a new global level of water concern. Empirical evidence is the exponential growth in global environmental impacts. The Anthropocene uh, includes the challenge of providing fresh water to, for human development to 9 billion people. Managing this new situation in which abrupt large-scale changes to the biophysical system can no longer be excluded. Water is critical to resilience of landscapes and communities. It is connected to the fundamental aspects in the, of the future survival and prosperity of humankind. All living organisms in the biosphere and the ability of the landscape to provide eco ecosystem services depend on fresh water for plant growth and to sustain ecological habitats. Water is the bloodstream of the biosphere. Water is the prerequisite for human health, food production, and the generation of all other ecosystem services from biodiversity to temperature regulation. Once a threshold of a new stable is crossed, it is difficult, if not impossible, to restore the original system functions. We solve for our plan. We outweigh, even if you buy risk of negative impacts, I now stand ready for cross acts. All right, so we're going to do cross takes and then I'll give a little tidbit of what's going on in the debate. So the, uh, it'll be Mr. Mer no, I'm sorry, Will will be providing the cross takes. Okay, um, so you have said time and time again, the app outweighs. Uh, your impact suggests that the reason why we would have a nuclear conflict is because of water resource wars. Can you give me three examples of them happening now? So just to clarify, we have two impacts. We have the uh, extinction impact off of our environmental solvency and biodiversity, and then we also have water wars, right? So we're outweighing in two ways, but in, in terms of the water wars impact, um, historically, there hasn't been a direct example, but we have okay, a lot of- Life that doesn't exist. Awesome. Second, your, bio, your argument about biodiversity, right? In the question of biodiversity, how does the app solve for biodiversity if the plan is to degrowth where there are missing change that needs we, we need adaption to? Why is technology not the future of adaptation? Okay, so we actually access extinction through multiple avenues, not just biodiversity, right? We're talking about water quality, access to water, um, and biodiversity. Biodiversity, that's the, that's the concluding terminal impact, right? Biodiversity laws. Right. Well, the, so, the terminal impact is extinction, right? But biodiversity is one of the ways in which we access that terminal impact. Um, but uh, in terms of biodiversity, right? Like, like 
our Aguirre 20 card talks about how techno techno fixes have been sort of this corporate propaganda machine that is uh, selling the idea that if we just keep investing in corporations that eventually they're going to come up with this innovative solution but clearly that hasn't happened and from the card I read in the last speech, we're already entering degrowth, whether we want to or not. So okay, the question uh, is not, what, is degrowth good? Example, how are we, we going to survive it? I'm sorry for cutting you off. Uh, right. What example do we have of degrowth working in any society? Um, so, I mean, I don't know the entirety of human history, but like the, the point that I'm making here is that it's not an option. We're not asking, do you want to enter degrowth? We're telling you this is happening right now, whether you want to or not. And that's how part do you know of the that? economic system, right? How do sorry. we know that there's no examples of it? Sorry, what was the question? How do we know we're in a period of degrowth and there's no other examples historically of it? I mean, there's tons of examples of degrowth historically. I don't, uh, like, you know, the Roman Empire entered degrowth. I don't know how far back you're asking me to go oh, here. Uh, um, well, I guess the your argument is the permutation. Uh, your second permutation says we can do the counter plan, then do the app. Uh, why do we need the federal government if the states have the authority and agency to do so? That sounds like an interruption of federalism. Well, so we read a couple of cards answering that about how the counter plan by itself can't solve anyway. So procedural wow. federalism is actually normal. Well, and also- I don't think a particular warrant that suggests that the states are not adequate. If anything, the first piece of evidence you read suggests that the states have already adopted and done CWA fundamentally better than the federal government, the part you don't highlight. Right, but there are key federal lands that author that states don't have authority over, like lots of federal lands that are often the most polluted federal lands land, in the country. Especially when they're stolen federal lands. So, sorry, can you repeat that? Who has access to those federal lands when they're stolen? Fe stolen federal land. That's time. Did you want me to answer the question? Or do you want to move on? Sure, we'll take part. Okay. All right. Okay. So. <laughs> So uh, hopefully you've been following with the debate. I, I've been enjoying the debate thus far. I'm glad I'm not participating because there's been a lot of content here and a lot of different strategic um, positions that are going on. So just to keep you abreast of a few things for a lot of the students who are watching, who are new, who are just um, starting to um, get into debate, some things that I want you to be familiar with as you um, continue to participate in this activity and things that you can use as well in the future as strategic options. So the first things first, um, the first thing that <clears throat> that I noticed that Amy did um, that some of you might not be aware of or something to use, me, me and Amy just gave, a, well, I gave a, um, a lecture, but Amy was there with me and helped me um, give some insight on um, what counter plans are. And so um, you can go back and re-watch that um, lecture. Um, and if you want that lecture, I can send it to you. Uh, but um, she did a perm. And basically what a perm is, is basically saying that you can do both plans at the same time and that the negative plan is not competitive. If the negative is going to do what the affirmative does, there's no reason to vote for the negative. Again, the negative job is to say that you only, uh, you only re-entrench the status quo or you make the status quo worse. And that's what the negative job is. And so she basically said, we can do this plan um, well, she had two types of perms. The first perm was a do both, right? Yes, it was a do both, which means both plans are not mutually exclusive. And then the second one is a time frame um, counter, uh, counter uh, perm, excuse me, a time frame perm, which means that as um, was articulated in the cross X, that you know you would do the counter plan first and then the then the affirmative later which is something that the uh, uh, affirmative can do as a strategic option. And then there was something interesting um, as you're learning how to flow. Um, Amy said cross apply, which is the term that you want to use. It's when debaters use an argument on one sheet of paper and they then transfer that argument to another piece of paper. So you want to be mindful of, of what's going on in the flow. And just to give you some insight on what's going on here, just content wise, argument wise. Um, so I'll start with the, we went with the counter plan first, right? No, well, there was, a, well, basically there was an overview. Let's just start with the overview. Um, the overview is basically just a synopsis of how the judge should evaluate the round and what are the most pressing parts of the debate. So that's why um, sometimes judges will fold that on a separate sheet of paper or they'll flow it next to the affirmative and block it out just to ensure that they are providing the good measurement that the affirmative has laid out um, within their uh, 
evaluating or within their uh, way of um, deciding the round. And so um, then there was a counter plan, which of course we talked about the perms, which she articulated you can do both. Um, the, the important content part here was that she was talking about federal lands, that, there, that there's parts of the government um, that, that the federal government controls um, and has um, sovereignty over certain parts of public land and that, you know, the states don't have, act, well, don't have the proper uh, ways of resolving those issues and those habitats. And that's why it's important for federal actions to be, um, you know, a, a way of process of, you know, resolving economic, uh, I must say not economic, but ecological destruction and pollution and those things. And then we went over to, I believe it was the federalism just said, right? And then the federalism just said, um, she cross applied the perms, which, you know, stood a, a testament to why there's no disadvantages there. And so that's why she cross applied those perms. Um, and then she made some no links. Basically, she's not the reason why these impacts exist. Um, and then she went on to um, talk about how um, states are crucial to solving these issues, that um, federal action is necessary, but a lot of the enforcement and a, a lot of the states already get involved. A lot of these states are getting involved in international diplomatic conversations. They're at a lot of these international meetings. A lot of these states provide a lot of international insight on what's going on locally. So she was reading some arguments about that. And some other stuff was happening there, but you should be following the debate. Um, we can talk about more about this later. Um, and then she went back to um, defend her affirmative, which is the last piece of paper on the roadmap that she went into in her speech. And she was talking about um, how we need to, despite whatever the negative said, that we all drink water and that this is not a matter of us stealing lands or who stole lands. This is a matter of where we are right now uniquely and how we need to move forward and addressing these issues through a framework that we can work with now. And so that was kind of how she responded to some of the negative arguments. Um, there were some other things that were happening in the debate, um, but we can talk about this later on. I probably might give a reason for decision as I'm moderating. I don't know, because I'm really like up in the air right now. I probably am not the best person to be judging this round, but um, we can definitely um, I'll talk about different parts about what's going on later on as you may have some questions because I may have some questions I might ask the debaters and just so you know you all can get more insight on what's going on in the debate but here is where we have the negative block um, this I've kind of provided them some prep time because I don't want any um, uh, split of the negative block because I want to show my debaters not to split the negative block so this is a practice you will um, I will urge that you use and implore. So you want to take prep time before the two in C and the one in R because you don't want to split up those two speeches because they're consecutive speeches back to back. And that really pressures Sophie on trying to answer a lot of the this content that's so heavy um, within that speech. Um, and so, um, yeah, um, we'll start getting, um, getting ready for the negative block. And hopefully you are enjoying this debate as I am. There's a lot of stuff going on and I'm really appreciative for you guys, um, you all who are volunteering for taking it seriously and showing these kids how to do it because this is how you do it. Uh, quickly, uh, Willie wanted me to answer that question. Um, so I'm just gonna do that really quick. I believe, uh, and maybe, sorry, you might need to restate the question um, really quick, just so, because we're jumping back. Uh, the question was, and given that these are federal lands, given that these are federal lands, which are stolen lands, who speak for or ba basically who has authority or agency over these lands once the plan happens? Right. OK, um, so uh, just to answer that last question, um, the the whole point of our answers to the counter plan, right, and the federalism to said is that the only current agency who has authority over those lands is the federal government. And so without federal government action, without the counter plan perm, uh, like the, the perm is the best way to solve because it combines state and federal action so that federal the federal government can exercise authority over those federal lands and also oversight over state actions. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, um, I sent a document in the chat. Um, uh, if y'all can, y'all can download, um, word right so it's good all right dope um okay so um i'm gonna go to the counter plan page and then i'm gonna go to the disadvantage page 
um, there will be an overview um, uh, just like Amy had on both of the flows. So I would recommend just leaving a little space at the top of your flow so that you have enough space to get the overview down. Um, but there will be overview. And I'll make sure I'm very explicit when I'm switching from the overview to the line by line stuff, okay? Um, first of all, am I loud enough? And I'm good, like I'm clear and stuff. All right, perfect. Because um, I'm not going to be looking at my Zoom, but looking at the doc um, and my timer because this is, I'm out of practice. Uh, Okie dokie. Um, hmm. Don't feel bad. I, got, I lost the demo debate to Isaac and Corey, so it's all right. Couldn't be me. <laughs> all right, let's do this thing. Uh, Y'all all ready? Lovely. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Hold on. I need to take a sip of the water. <laughs> Stay hydrated, kids. Drink more water. All right, here we go. Overview for the state's counterplan. The counterplan establishes the same right at the state level. No ad evidence assumes how massive the counterplan's legal revolution is. It spills up. It's a moral and political force that permeates legal culture. That's our ELC evidence and its model internationally, which they've conceded in cross-examination is necessary for climate change to be resolved. State leaders like Governor Inslee and Brown share best practices, link programs, and support global climate agreements like Paris. That's our royal evidence. Policy leadership and bargaining guarantee, guarantee federal entrenchment. This is Rabe in two 2008. In many instances, early state policy engagement has provided models that were embraced as national policy. States sustain policy leadership, institutional impediments to federal action, give states a strong bargaining role in federal policy formation. States possess climate policy expertise that may surpass federal institutions. Now, the line by line. First, they said that preemption is a reason the counter plan does not solve. Changing state constitution and passing legislation granting rights to rivers is unprecedented. It's not assumed by preemption evidence about localities acting. States have significantly more con constitutional room to maneuver. Pennsylvania proves that's our ELC evidence. Additionally, parallel legal doctrines succeed at the state level. This is Shelton in 2015. Public trust, a move towards legal personality, the doctrine held waters, constituted a common asset. Many courts confer guardianship. States have power to provide rights. Additional state constitutions amended have incorporated PTD to provide greater protection to the environment. Hawaii's constitution goes further than, than state, uh, uh, goes further. The state protects all resources, including water and energy sources. And trends prove states are increasingly winning protection for non-human entities. This is ALDF in 2017. There is a growing environmental personhood movement, environment evolution in the law. As of 2017, animals can be beneficiaries of legally enforceable trust in all 50 states. Some state legislatures address animal sentience. Federal and state courts recognize animals as a crime victim and sentencing. And no preemption if all 50 states act. This is Rabe in 2011. Preemption reflects a federal effort to eliminate variation. Preemption in the climate arena is most likely in instances where the total number of active states is limited. That's especially true when it comes to court battles like the counterplay. This is Rabe in 2008. The Supreme Court verdict in Massachusetts versus EPA that a collective of states can win a court battle that may force a reluctant federal agency to designate carbon dioxide as an air pollutant. This is already triggering additional multi-state efforts to use the federal courts as a venue to challenge other decisions by the private sector or federal agencies. They also said that federal lands are a reason the counter plan doesn't solve. But first, their evidence is not as good as their tag is. Nowhere does this evidence speak to the prohibition of state courts being able to uphold rights of nature that are within their jurisdiction, whereas the negative has already read three pieces of evidence that speaks to the court system, particularly of state courts, being able to uphold the rights of natural resources and the expertise that that comes with in solving climate change, which means the counter plan is the better option. Additionally, the affirmative also doesn't solve for federal lands. Our evidence indicts Washington, D.C. or the federal government's capacity to resolve federal lands pollution because each federal land is different and it just overstretches, i.e. means it's just too much work for the federal prosecutors to be able to deal with each individual instance, whereas the counter plan is a much better option because it provides a localized version of solvency. I'm from New Jersey. You may be from Oakland. Your Oakland problems don't fit New Jersey's solutions, which proves that each individual state requires each individual solution and an, oh, a blanket approach from the federal government producing things from one level opposed to each individual level does not solve the problem of pollution or of using these places. Now, the permutation debate. 
answer to permutation do both. Establishing clear lines of division of federal and state authority is key. Overlap causes blame shifting and encourages legislative irresponsibility. This is Sturtz in 2011. Doctrines that purport to pr uh, protect state prerogatives make the situation worse. Federal law leave prosecutors with a fuzzy and constantly changing line between the two. Voters cannot know whom to credit when a system functions well and who to blame when it doesn't. That encourages irresponsible legislation. It's better to draw lines that ex uh, should be exclusively federal and exclusively enforced by the state. And um, the permit and the permutation also links to the net benefit of federalism because if the federal government oversteps on the state's ability to work on water protection, then that destroys the ability for states to be able to be modeled internationally. Le Finally, they said time frame permutation, but time frame permutations are illegitimate and a voting issue for competitive equity. First, they're moving target. No negative could ever win a competitive counterplan if the affirmative gets to just say do one and then the other. It means we can never generate stable offense. Additionally, it's not grounded in the literature. You will never find an author that's like maybe we can do this one later and then this one. It destroys education on the counterplan. Additionally, it severs the immediacy of the plan. Future fiat, which means that it's going to guarantee happen sometime later, which is what the permutation suggests, is illegitimate. The affirmative can non-unique and say all of our net benefits won't happen by the time the plan happens. And that's not reciprocal which destroys negative ground. Federalism dissent. The disadvantage outweighs and turns the case. Climate change is the greatest impact. They've done that work for me above, but it's a risk magnifier for all other impacts. And they've conceded or haven't talked about water wars. So it seems climate change is the biggest impact in the debate. Water allocation rights are critical to water federalism, which the affirmative wrecks through federal overstepping into states' jurisdictions. And water federalism violations spill over to implicate all state authority, like in New Hampshire and Texas, where federal law preceded state protections of the environment. That's our Craig and our Huffaker evidence. Wrecked federalism obliterates America's ability to have successfully cooperative efforts aimed at addressing climate change and limiting the environmental impact of other federal mandates. That's our Ibisin evidence. Federalism also prevents civil conflicts from escalating to global nuclear war. This is Lawadi in 2009. Cross-national studies have shown that federalism minimizes violent conflicts, stifles the development of rebellions, moderates politics by expanding the opportunity for victory. Federalism reduces the level of ethnic violence. Groups at the local level can influence many of the issues that matter to them. Broad empirical studies support the claims that power sharing can foster peaceful accommodation and prevent violent conflicts. It builds long-term support for peaceful solution and undermines appeals to a militant action. Now, on the line by line, you can group their fishmen and their bomb gardener, which are the two cards that they read at the top. Both of these evidence assume the processes of both natural rights and natural resource rights, which are not water allocation rights, which we've already extended our Craig evidence that says that water allocation is the most important area of water federalism. And empirically, the federal government defers to the states. This means that the plan uniquely abrupts the ecosystem of states and federal rights. Now there's Sichi and McDonald evidence. First, our Rabe evidence indicates that uh, the technology to resolve climate change and to protect water is at a higher level than the federal government, particularly on the level of technology. Their evidence says that it's ineffective strategies, but their evidence does not assume the revolution of the counterplan. Remember our, our evidence from the one and see our ELU evidence or ELC evidence, which indicates that rights of nature is crazy new. It's revolutionary for the way that we can protect the environment by people being able to sue and, and, and sue, sue and give rights to waterways. If that happens at the local level, I've already kind of explained why that's better, but it also proves that their evidence is way too old and does not assume the new process of legal court status of the counterplan, which means the counterplan, uh, uh, which means the disad is in a better situation for uniqueness than the affirmative. Um, I think I have like 10 seconds left. So uh, yeah, I'll just stop there. Thank you. All right, so um, now we're going to start with the um, cross-examination, and then the negative will continue with the negative block, and it'll be Willie's turn to speak. So students, remember, when you're here at, at this point of the debate, after the cross-examination, you want to keep going with the negative. Okay, uh, are you ready for cross-ex? I'm good now. I'm sorry. No, you're okay. No problem. Okay, um, so uh, first question on the um, counter plan. Um, can you explain how you guarantee that all states are gonna comply with your fiated 50 state counter plan? Uh, we get fiat. I think we can fiat the counter plan text 
you haven't made like an argument for why we can't fiat that all states work uniformly to provide a right of nature. So we'll fiat that each state affirms or each state court will uphold the rights of nature when those two happen. And also, I think the solvency of the plan and of the counter plan doesn't come from enforce, like it comes from the state courts putting it on the docket and having it that those those areas of nature like waterways have rights. Uh, same with the so, F. So sorry, you're that. saying that you're just not not just fiating that states are adding this to their constitution or whatever, or passing a law, right? You're not just saying that they're adding it. You're also now claiming that you're fiating future court rulings. No, we're just fiat. I'm, I was explaining that we don't have to fiat future court rulings to solve okay. the AF advantage or the disad. The only thing that we need to do is provide it as a legal precedent. Right, but our evidence of. talks about how, for example, Kentucky uh, completely failed to comply with state cooperative um, environmental uh, regulations and that they specifically ignored science. So how do you ensure that Kentucky, who clearly has a political agenda in order to do that, how do you ensure that they comply with their neighboring states, that they are cooperative without any federal oversight at all? The, the, this evidence assumes a world in which states don't have, or waterways don't have rights that are defended by state courts first. Secondly- Right, but you just said okay, that you don't fiat state courts. And we're claiming, well, we're not claiming we fiat federal courts either, but- yeah, You fiat that the Congress makes a plan, which even, even if that's so, probably doesn't solve it because courts are the one that uphold cases. We're fiating the same functionality of the affirmative just at the state level. And I don't know what the, the okay. we, what we're missing here. That's fine. Um, so can you explain why the, um, you claim that you had evidence that the federal government doesn't solve on federal lands. Can you, can you explain then if the federal government is not the one enacting this policy on federal lands, who exactly are you claiming that's going to be? My argument is that the, even if, even if the federal government has acted in the past, we've read tons of evidence on the disad and the counter plan about how the federal government is inefficient at resolving water protection on, on major levels, not just on federal lands, but so also- nobody on, solves on, on federal land. That's what you're claiming. Nobody solves. No, the federal government doesn't. And then there's no rights of nature in the status quo that the states uphold. If the states are able to resolve, and your evidence that you read doesn't speak to any prohibition of state courts defending state lands, especially when those lands are within their jurisdiction. So I don't know what the the the, the disadvantage of the counter plan is, or the solvency deficit is. Okay. That's actually, we have five seconds left. I know you didn't time it, but I did, so we're good. Um, so we'll just end there. Okay, we're just gonna continue with the negative block. Um, this is again, the two consecutive back-to-back -back speeches from the negative that you don't want to split up. Um, the roadmap earlier was already provided. So the only uh, piece of paper left is the affirmative on case. So you, you're going to start with that paper that started in black. We all good? Y'all hear me? Awesome, cool. Uh, this case, uh, there's gonna be a small overview on the top. You can just slow it right down. This is five minutes, right? Okay, told you I was old. I haven't done about, like high school in a minute. All right. We believe that the choice is a little bit overzealous in explaining why the app actually outweighs. They have no justification or reason why the firm actually outweighs their internal link to their their internal link to the water wars. It's particularly nothing has nothing to do with America or America law, right? This is a reach if they think that international law is being entertained or being justified through the United States government uniquely. This is probably a Trump, this probably dumped by Trump, which means that they have no internal link because even if we adopted the law, which we think should happen at the state level.
The federal government does not even spill up or spill over. They have no claims to spill up or spill over, which means that there's no international law. She did not extend a piece of evidence to suggest that, which means she don't have access to the impact anymore, which means there's no nuclear war. Secondly, that all causes probably bite back against this impact. And in the first place, they would suggest that things like maybe Pakistan, India's like unique relationships on land, territorial land disputes might be the reason for it. Maybe it's U.S. intervention, which means that federal government agencies, particularly federal intervention, would probably be problematic in this situation in any way, cause nuclear war anyway, which means that they don't resolve war the resource wars. If anything, they create more war resource wars by federal government oversight. We can say is probably still the better option. It's second that they don't solve biodiversity because we, they have no example of where deep growth has worked, which means that there's a hundred percent likelihood that, they, that the impact A does not take form and B, that we are not moving towards diverse laws. Persons who need this justification for why you don't vote affirmative, you can vote neg on presumption because they have not proven any burden that they resolved in the first place. Second, and this is probably going to be the kicker. We can go to the line by line. They flat out conceded our they flat out conceded the Wilson 19 evidence to straight turn to the methodology of the one AC suggested that the focus on indigenous people is no longer a concern and it's legitimately the structure of colonialism that leads to water resource wars in the first place, which means that we control all the eternal links to their impacts in the first place. The lack of indigenous control or rights, i.e., the federal land that they talk about is uniquely the reason why you should reject them because on the Pacific logic, the re, uh, refashioning of law to protect the rivers does not protect those who uniquely have a relationship with rivers with the, the indigenous dispossessed people so their federal land argument actually is a straight turn to the rhetorical research project the one it's just that indian uh, indigenous dispossession would continue to happen in the status quo it's a unique reason to rope them down there's no answer on the flow you can check the two ac remember that paper you have there's no answer that cannot record connect this which means that their lack of the that the lack of resolve for indigenous people which is the entirety of the one ac is completely devolved coming out of the two ac it's all about micro management and federal regulation and federal control, which is exactly the violence that is produced in the second place. You can go to the DARPA evidence, uh, the, the, our DARPA, uh, DARPA evidence. It uniquely is a short term when I say says not only is the RON completely new and not the strategic best option, but federal government has been weak at enforcement. Her argument to this does only answer the author, but does not answer the author's warrant, which suggests that there have been weak enforcement and lacking funding, which means that if the federal government uh, does not provide enough funding for places like Mississippi or Detroit, for example, then water resources wars are very likely. This is the problem. This is the reason why I straight terms get from complete because they have no justification for why the resources are actually there for the federal government to do it on a small scale done by the state's government would uniquely resolve 100% of this impact, which means that the only thing you look for is that the counseling does this fundamentally better and they have no solvency for how they actually resolve the crisis, the crisis on the uh, crisis on, the, uh, on a minute level, given that RON and the federal government work together has led to weak enforcement. Second is that their hockey evidence is probably incorrect. We're going to read a hockey evidence that predates, that predates theirs. Sorry. Uh, no deep growth. Hawkins, uh, these Hawkins 21 on the Rowan's goals, reducing extraction is severely hampered Bol Bolivian e Ecuador. The rule of the rule of uh, rights of nature is curtailed visa uh, vis a vis the need for the growth indigenous indigenous, indigenous philosophy proteins reinterpret it's incorporated as traditional ideas of development. The hegemon of growth is not superseded. The right of nature are, rep are, are, are re reinterpreted as a progressive map to continue extractive systems. And this is exactly the argument we're making with the Wilson Evans exactly what happened to the indigenous people they have already suggested against the production of the, uh, the rights of nature, particularly at the federal level, because they fell in places like Ecuador and, and Bolivia, which proved that the violence will always be in control of the hand of the federal government, which also straight turns to act and prove that federal government regulation only leads to a process where there's a, no, uh, there's a process of no growth at all seconds that you can probably drop down to the conceded, or, uh, to, uh, the conceded um, uh, conceded climate change on uh, climate change terms, particularly live and 18 evidence. They have made arguments why technology or technological focus is problematic. But the argument is that, furthermore, there's no current deep growth happening now. And second, that there has already been proven logic that some reversibility is possible given current technology right now. It suggests that the earth itself is not an isolated system and that fundamentally it's a problem of limits of growth that happens right now. The issue that the one sees a move towards that limit of growth, which fundamentally destroys any ability for us to reverse the abilities of climate change. You mean the climate change is the biggest impact in surrounds. And they have no explanation for why the impacts outweigh. Nick. All right, so the debate is getting a little bit more fleshed out at this point. So 
Um, I guess I'll start with kind of plan just to make sure that you all are staying abreast of what's going on. So um, basically in the counter plan, um, there was answers to the perm, um, particularly about why the federal government would not be beneficial. Um, one of the arguments is that the state government is better at culturally permeating um, into the local community to be able to resolve these issues. Um, not just uniquely because they're local geographically, but because of the systems that are currently in place. Um, and also that the state um, has to get involved anyway, and that federal government would only impede some of these current state processes. Um, he also made this, you know, example about how, you know, we can't resolve New Jersey's issues dealing with what's going on in California. Look, I was just at the Ocean Shores today. What, what's going on in Maryland? You know, I was just living in Maryland. What happened in, in the harbor of Maryland is not gonna resolve what's happening for me here at the main arena at Berkeley. Two different water systems, two different types of biodiversity, um, ge geography and all that. So some things to think about when focusing on, you know, what may be the best option. Um, and then let's go on to the federal, uh, federalism this said. So um, here, there were some arguments about like how there, there has been no evidence of water wars um, and that at least not to the magnitude in which would cause the impact. Um, and then there's arguments here about um, how the states are more peaceful, um, that there isn't any bad um, optics provided by the federal government. And so the optics of the states working creates better public perception um, to, add or be, to be able to provide better opportunities for resolution so that people feel comfortable with the plan that is being implemented. And also he makes arguments about like, you know, um, how, I think, hold on, am I, am I at the right, I'm on, am I on the right piece of paper? Do, do, do. Um, um, add a water allocation, and you know when federal governments are looking at you know what um, is needed to resolve our water issues, states defer. I mean, federal governments defer to states. So there were some arguments there. Um, and then on the next piece of paper, because this is the argument I think I was getting to here. Um, this piece of paper on the on the affirmative case specific, they were talking about. Here's a few things. <laughs> so I know some of the kids may not know about this. So um, in well, let me go back actually. I need to go back to the correct piece of paper. So go back to the count, the counter plan. Um, there was a part where Mr. Murphy was talking about um, moving target education. Um, um, you know, when you sever from the immediate plan, how that you know creates some issues and how they're fiating their solvency. So one thing I want to talk about first is fiat. Fiat is basically a Latin term that says to kind of, it's almost like the, like the, how we use resolved um, in the beginning part of the topic. So it's just saying that, you know, this, we don't have to worry about whether this plan will or not exist. It's the fact that the plan will be implemented. And let's talk about what's going to happen after that plan is implemented. We're not having conversation of will it pass or will it not pass? The conversation is about, will it be implemented? So, and what are the effects of that implementation? And so here, um, he was saying that basically the implementation of the AFS plan would not automatically bring about solvency, right? There has to be some steps that gets to that solvency. And it's just a matter of, you know, now it brings the question of which has the better course of action? Is it states? Is it federalism? Because again, if you want to go back to what Amy was saying, um, she made this example about Kentucky where, you know, Kentucky is not as maybe like California, which is probably is more pro environment, more pro, you know, diversity on literally the two few blocks from my house, there's a restoration habitat area. In Maryland, you don't find that where I'm from, you know, you don't just a few blocks from my house, it's just the hood, it's just the wires. So, you know what I'm saying? Um, where in California, there are more, you know, 
incentives for recycling and those types of things. And so when he's talking about education and moving target, target and those things, those are theory arguments. And we'll probably get to theory arguments later on. But that, when you make arguments about that, that's just arguments about how you conducted the debate and how the debate is going to be conducted as debaters. And we can kind of control those norms. And, you know, but we want to, he had reasons as to why we should defer to his particular norms rather than Amy's. So that's something you want to think about on the flow as well. And then, um, oh, back to the case, because I know I'm flipping. I, I went back to the, the, uh, the, the counter plan. I'm going to go back to the case. There was a few arguments about enforcement again, how um, funding is better through the states. And then there were some other arguments about how we don't like degrowth is bad. And degrowth is bad for those communities that the, the affirmative says are even more um, affected by you know, environmental degradation. So um, yeah, that's kind of the debate so far from what I understand it. Um, hopefully your coaches will probably you know, have some more questions. If you have questions, students, about this debate even more, um, please feel free um, to shoot me an email. But we're going to keep it going, and we'll probably have some more conversations um, at the end of the debate um, from everybody. Now we will have um, Sophie, who's the one AC, and she has to respond to that block. And um, of course, you remember the affirmative starts the debate and they end the debate. And so that's why the negative has that opportunity to kind of get some leg up. All right, so we're gonna go with uh, the state's counter plan and then the federalism DA and then on to case. Good. You good, Matino? Or... Oh, okay, okay. I didn't know if you were saying something. All right. Okay, so on the state's counter plan, first, extend both of our perms. Perm do both solves. We need the federal government to act to access key federal lands. Their stunts 11 card is specific to criminal law, which does not apply here as the work of providing rights to rivers involves rights that states and the federal government are already used to sharing. Uh, their Barton 17 card is specific to the Trump administration and doesn't apply now that we're in a new administration that is ad addressing climate change as a top priority. Also, regardless of the administration we're in, with fiat, this plan ensures that the federal government plays an important role in keeping states accountable and doesn't just turn a blind eye to climate change, which is exactly what their card is calling for. Uh, also, extend our Henshaw 17 card that is specific to environmental and water law and describes how a uh, cooperative model of federalism solves best. Worst case scenario, our time frame perp solves their issues if perms do both doesn't apply. Allowing the states to pass the plan first avoids any issues of states not being able to take the lead on the plan while still allowing for necessary federal oversight and covering federal lands. Also extend our Berman 19 card. We need the federal government involved in the plan. State level rights of nature laws will just get struck down and preempted by federal courts. The counter plan alone doesn't solve and extend Shank 21. We also need the federal government involved to be able to include federal lands. Um, they talk about how this is a turn on us because um, we're exerting federal federal government over these lands, but really we're in a way giving back the land by giving rivers their, their rights back. So we need federal policy to solve uh, solve in this area where states are not involved and really they have no way of solving for this. They basically concede this in uh, cross -ex. Also, uh, they talk about on the time frame perm that prime frame perms are illegitimate and a a voting issue, uh, a moving target, but um, that the negative could never solve. However, if the, uh, clearly, if the state plan already solved all the issues, we wouldn't need the one AC, which means you would uh, you would air neg. But the problem is that it doesn't, and the fact that they clearly leave some large loopholes, particularly with the federal lands out and upspill issues, um, it means we need these kinds of firms to to be able to to do competition and to make sure that negs aren't abusing their power of just doing picking little pieces out of the um, the federal the affirmative plan to solve. Also, they say it's not grounded in literature, but clearly it is. Obviously, there's plenty of times in literature where you see multiple different parts of plans. Um, and so that's why we need to continue to keep the uh, the other um, permutation as well. Also, um, they talk about how the affirmative doesn't solve federal lands, but we do again. Federal feds also have regional offices, so it's not just like the feds are, are this one central area. Um, 
and onto um, the federalism uh, DA, and just also extending the fact that um, we, right, we need uh, the Fishman 05 card and the Baumgartner 05 card uh, to solve. First of all, they talk about how those cards are not specific to water, but the Baumgartner 05 is specific to water and needs to regulate water pollution and talks about the use of water. Um, their credit card um, is talk, doesn't talk about uh, preservation of water. So therefore our card is actually more specific here. Uh, also extend uh, our Bosworth 20 card. It talks about how the EPA intervenes federally all the time. So these states are used to this and this is kind of actually uh, regularly we're, 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 what we're used to in the world. Um, also extend our turn that without federal oversight, things fail, Sechi and McDonald 19. This is the reason why we also need the federal government involved uh, um, and without the federal government actually providing oversight to things like conservative states, which are clearly not going to solve, as they said, um, in, in cross-sex plans, states get to do their thing the way they want it to. And we know that state, conservative states aren't going to do as much as the federal government will right now. Also, on to the case, um, we didn't draft the Wilson card. The Neville card was a direct turn to that. Uh, the argument was that the only way to solve for indigenous position is through policy action. And the Neville card evidence even states that indigenous groups are currently doing this in settler states. On water wars, we didn't drop that either. They, they said nothing about this in the one and C. And so we, but we extended the water wars overview in the overview, uh, in the overview. So extend that again here. That's Chilton, De Jamail, DeVito. They read no negative evidence on water wars. So you're going to prefer our evidence over there. Um, just, you know, ideas. Also for DARPA, it's just one other author claiming it's not an immediate paradigm shift, but I argued, uh, but we argued our evidence outweighs. We have multiple authors claiming it does. And even then, um, their, their, their argument is just that their cards say that it might not risk, but as long as there is a risk of, of solving, being able to solve with the app, you air app, it's not a straight turn. And we have a current example in which the US and Japan are per our Bernati 18 card that you're gonna extend here, that degrowth is an uh, issue that we need to solve for. Climate change is forcing the issue by destroying the economy and providers, and we need to solve for this. So therefore we have again, two, two impacts here that we're solving for. One is water wars and the other one is uh, climate change leading to extinction. I think that's time pretty much, right? So yeah, so hopefully you can see um, with how um, you when you're being a one AR, I think what Sophie did is a good job is figuring out which what are your most important arguments, and this is where I think a lot of the cross application happens for debaters is doing the 1A, 1AC. I was a 1AR as well, so I did a lot of cross-applications because you want to make sure that you're efficient and you want to make sure that you're telling that story of what the affirmative does. Um, and you want to make sure that you're able to extend your 1AC, but also argue back what the negative has said and make sure that you're still upholding the parts of your affirmative that were still there. And I think um, she did a good job responding to these key parts. Um, and also, um, when you, uh, we, we're talking about this competition of who has a better competition and you know making the affirmative unique um as a unique reason to do that action um is what what the affirmative should be doing right like the affirmative job is to present the a plan that is uniquely beneficial and that would be significant significant enough to create change and so she highlighted two major things that was her focus of resolving, which was water wars and climate change. Um, again, she was talking about how, you know, the EPA makes the dissent um, of federalism non-unique, right? We already have these agencies already being involved, getting these states in order, creating a standard of what we should, there should be a standard nationwide, right? Like, even though I get that Kentucky may need some more enforcement or Kentucky may need be one of those states that needs more funding. Um, and because, I, and to some degree, to, to what um, Will was saying in his one and R is that, you know, in order for there to be, th there needs to be state equity to create actual climate change, right? But then Sophie then says, hey, I understand we need equity, right? Like real equity within states to create real change but there still needs to be some at least man manageable standard, right? Screw your debate theory standards of how we should conduct this debate, right? But there's actual standards within the environment 
that we should have, no matter if you're in California or no matter if you're in Texas, right? And so that's what I think Sophie is kind of articulating. And there were some other arguments there, but those are some of the ones that stood out to me. Um, and so at this moment, we're gonna try to have our last two speeches. Um, so the next speech will be the last speech from the negative, and then it'll be the last speech from the affirmative. And I have like two minutes. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. Um, also students, um, when you're watching this debate, I want you to not only flow this debate, but think about who is winning the argument for you. One of the things I really, really encourage, don't give me reasons, oh, Will sounded pretty, Amy sounded pretty, oh, uh, um, Mr. Murphy had, oh, he just speaks so eloquently. I liked his examples. That's not what I want for a reason for decision. I want you to explain what argument made the biggest impact to you in the round and why. That's what I want you to try to figure out in this debate. I'm still trying to figure that out. I don't know. I think this is a really fleshed out debate. But um, really quickly, before we continue this debate, I want to say again, thank you to all of the volunteers, including Amy, um, for making this happen. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to really flesh this file, even though I created half of it. Um, some of it was I recycled. So some of the stuff I really didn't hash through. Um, not every position. Um, a lot of the on-case stuff and critique stuff is the stuff that I did. So some of these arguments I were not aware of that were in the file. So I really appreciate you for um, helping the students have, um, have access to these arguments that they may not have been given access to, largely because I'm trying to focus on making sure that they have the fundamentals, but um, I really appreciate you all for um, showing what you know we do as debaters and putting your best foot forward um, because this is the actual skill level that you would need to know. So these are some of the skills you would need to emulate in some of your future debates. So please, please, please be mindful of some of these things that are going on. They will reappear, especially in some of these skill-based practices that I'll be um, lecturing You'll be having, we just did one on counter plans, right? That's why I wanted to do that lecture on counter plans so that you all can be aware, uh, prepared for this demo debate. A lot of you did not attend that. I have sent, I will be sending that lecture or that presentation to your coaches for next week if they want to use it, use that lecture um, for practice. There's five other perms that have been not been discussed, maybe even more perms but at least four or five of the perms that have not been discussed that I went over in my lecture. So if you want to learn about those other types of perms, please see my lecture um, in my presentation. Um, you can go to the BAUDL YouTube where they'll be posting my, um, my, uh, my sessions for practices. And also you can ask your coach for that slideshow um, to help get you prepared for the tournament. I know that a lot of you are nervous about the tournament, um, about my visits. Again, if I cannot make the visit, I only come to your schools every other week. Though the, the, the week that I'm not at your school is the week that you need to be on Zoom, either at the novice practice on Tuesdays with Sakai or at the open division practices with myself on Thursdays. Every student who's came to my lecture has said that they have learned something. So please, Please come to my lectures. Y'all don't know how to flow. I can teach you. You don't know how to run a counter plan. I can teach you. I might not be the best, but I at least can give you the fundamentals of have your counter plan, have your counter plan text, have your counter plan solvency, how to have your net benefit, and how to make it mutually exclusive. At least I had the things to get you in the door. The, the reason why I bring other people who are volunteers in, in is because if I'm not the best person to explain it to you, I know that there's somebody else is. So if you feel like you're missing me on these practices, don't expect me to be there every day. You know what I'm saying? Because your coach is going to be there um, to be help, help you. Um, and then there's other opportunities and other sessions to get the help. So don't just depend on myself or your coach. Please know that this debate is a community. Please reach out to Amy. She's one of our volunteers. Please reach out to Maya. Please reach out to Jonah. Please reach out to the student leadership coordinator. She is also a champion. So please, you have all these people who you have access to. Don't limit your opportunities to have to be successful by just going down one road. 
Think of a counter plan, right? This is why debate gives you the skills. If I'm not there that week, think of a counter plan. Some of you are kind of bummed out. I'm not going to be at your school that week. Well, hey, I have Zoom sessions. You should be attending my Zoom sessions on Thursdays. So don't be texting your coach saying, hey, are you going to come and visit this week? Because I was there last week and you missed me. No, you have tons of opportunities to see me every week, either via Zoom or in person. So I'm available. You have my, I have two phone lines. I pay for a phone line, okay? Just for you debaters. So hit my phone line up. There's a signature at the end of my email where you have my, uh, my information. I get paid to do debate 24 seven. I get paid to research and cut cards. Use me as a resource. I will have volunteers that I can possibly have. If I'm not the best person to, to create that argument, I will find somebody. But please, if you're not coming to me, I'm not gonna do the work for you, right? So you have to come to me. So if you have questions about this debate, if you have questions about how to flow this debate, if you have questions about things you want to know about the content of what's going on in these arguments. I probably haven't gone through the, all of the files, but I'll go through the file when I need to, if I need to go through it with you to be able to explain these arguments via the card or via what I think the card is extrapolating. All right. So now that we got that little coaching thing out the way, I just had to say that because um, I, I want to get on some of y'all's tales about, you know, taking responsibility because, you know, again, y'all, these people are here because they taking responsibility. I, I was a few a, a few years ahead of Sophie. You know, she she I didn't see her come in after I came in and just do nothing, right? She was at practices. Um, Amy, she's been at all the practice sessions that I, I've been at. So all you Oakland Tech kids, your coach is kind of upset with you. I'm kind of upset with you, okay? So get here, okay? The other kids from the other schools who've been coming, who have not been from Amy's schools, I, I appreciate it. Tell these other students to come out to these practices. Every student has said that they have learned something that they didn't know about debate. And honestly, everything we've been going over have been debate fundamentals. So we want to get you to the point where you can be recruited by these colleges, that these colleges see you. And we also want to give you opportunity to have access to a lot of the opportunities debate can get you. I've had people be on Essence Magazine. I've done stuff with NPR and the, the opportunities spill over times 10. All right. So now that we have that out the way, um, let's get down to the rest of the debate. I think um, he's about prepared. And so, yeah. Okie dokie. Also, shout out to Sakai. Sakai was in my lab many, many years ago uh, when I taught in California. So shout out to Sakai. I'm happy she's still around. <laughs> All right. Um, the order will be the counter plan, uh, the disadvantage, and then the affirmative. The counter plan, the disadvantage, and the affirmative. All right. Hey, everybody good? Okay. The counter plan solves the affirmative internal links. Remember that this impact of this debate is who best resolves climate change through the protection of water. I'll have an impact turn to their argument about water wars later, but the affirmative has no warrant for why other nations will follow us and will model us to stop water catastrophe and climate change after the dump or the, the thumper of Trump destroying our international credibility, whereas the counter plan has solvency. They have conceded that inter internationally, our state leaders like Governor Inslee and Brown share best practices, link programs, and support global climate agreements like Paris to be the best way to internationally model our politics of water protection to be able to solve back for climate change in the future. And it builds up its moral and political force that permeates legal culture. That's our ELC evidence that is conceded coming out of the one AR. They have extended their time for permutation, but they have also dropped that there's no literature basis. Literally no one says that we can do something right now and then maybe we can do it in the future to describe federal and state interaction. If anything, federal and state interaction is always one-sided, extend two pieces of really important evidence. First is our Schultz evidence. Yes, it may be in the context of criminal law, but it explains how legal doctrine is ignored from the state of, from the federal level when it comes time for them to work cooperatively with the states, which means the permutation ends up as the federal government acting alone and over-determining states' rights and destroying their capacity to be modeled internationally to solve back for climate change, which means the permutation links to our net benefit of federalism being the best international system, not only to solve climate 
climate change but for nuclear war additionally they have conceded our uniqueness evidence that indicates that the federal government not only oversteps on, on the state project of water protection or water scarcity but it also undermines their capacity to do well which means it's a solvency deficit that the permutation does not solve climate change but the counterplay alone does a much better job of doing so additionally they say that our evidence is about trump even so this doesn't mean our internationally we look good in the face of biden we're still dealing with climate we're still dealing with uh, climate change we're still dealing with people being beat at the border like the haitians that's international news which shows internationally we are not being modeled for the way that we're dealing with private rights particularly on a level of natural resources you should prefer the counter plan two reasons first it's localized i said this in the 2nc that states are better oakland can't solve jersey jersey can't solve oakland but they can solve each individually and that's the best strategy to solve back for waterways now their best argument in this debate is that federal lands don't get solved. I have three responses. The first is their evidence is trash. It does not say that federal lands are not able to be resolved by state's courts. Secondly, they say Kentucky, our argument is that each state works uniformly to produce the same rights of nature that their evidence has touted as being the best impact. And finally, even if that's true, the counter plan solves the biggest impact in the debate, which is climate change, which outweighs any other reason the affirmative is good. Go to federalism. Oh, oh, on preemption, they have no warrant in the one ER, and we've read multiple cards about how state courts overdetermine preemption and can resolve those things when it comes for the states acting unilaterally. Check our evidence. They've read none. This ad. The dissent outweighs and turns the case. First, destroying federalism, like I've done above, destroys our capacity to have international networks that can solve climate change because we won't be modeled to have better practices internationally or globally. Secondly, federalism causes and resolves nuclear conflicts because it produces ways to prohibit interactions or conflicts over things like land disputes or water disputes and produce international peace. Now, this is really important because remember, their other impact on the case was water wars, but they don't solve them. They have no reason why they can solve conflicts between India and Pakistan when the dispute over land on Kashmir is 70, 80 years in history. They have no reason why they solve that for Asia or North Africa, especially when they don't want to model the Donald Trump slash Joe Biden Haitian whooping presidency. Instead, our counter plan resolves that. Additionally, uh, 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 which means the counter plan does not, the, the counter plan and the dissent outweighs and solves an impact that is external of the affirmative and probably resolves the reasons why water wars are so bad in the first place, even though the affirmative cannot do so. Let's do a little impact calculus here. First, our impacts outweigh on probability and magnitude. First, magnitude. Climate change implicates every other thing. Water scarcity. It destroys our crops. It means that countries will fight for resources leading to nuclear conflicts, and it can destroy humanity because we no longer they live in an ice age and have don't have the capacity to survive that, 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 that situation. Secondly, is, uh, 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 secondly, nuclear war is almost definite because last time there was nuclear conflict, there were only two even shot, and it destroyed Japan Japan for generations. Imagine that on a global scale. Second is probability. The likelihood that states are able to produce collaborative networks of climate change to resolve that is high, especially in a world where they're already doing so. Our evidence says that 30 states challenged the trash proposals of Trump's presidency to improve climate change in the status quo. And the probability of conflict being resolved is, twofold, is, is, is true because of those same international networks produced via states. It's the better option. It solves the AF, and the AF doesn't solve itself. Vote negative. Okay, debaters. So that was the last speech from the negative. Um, a lot of these arguments about probability. Um, so just to be mindful there, when, when you're measuring your impacts, here's a fundamental thing that you would need to use because a lot of you all don't have fundamentals. When thinking about we, me and Amy, which you'll see, um, we did um, in our first, in my first open um, league based skill practice, we did a kind of an apocalyptic hypothetical um, debate activity where we did hypotheticals with like um, shark tornadoes and meteorites. And there was three ways that we um, were able to measure which would be the worst scenario. Um, and the, the way that we did that in that activity was time frame, probability, and magnitude. So you'll hear those um, those phrases a lot. Time frame is just a matter of like when is it going to happen. Probability, how likely. Magnitude, how much it'll impact you. So just be mindful when you hear those terms. Um, 
some things that were brought on this debate. Um, again, you, uh, stuff about you know how the federal government is probably not the best after Trump's rollbacks on environmental um, protection. There was arguments about um, also how you know indigenous people already fighting now, um, and that probably they'll probably be more involved with state recourse of action rather than with federal actions because federal actions again they re-extended this argument, but a little bit with more um, extrapolation as to why federal governments wouldn't be as peaceful in terms of optics. Um, and then um, also too that, um, that, um, that basically the AF doesn't have any reason why that there will be like any increased indigenous like participation, but um, already in a status quo, like there are indigenous folks like participating in court and legal action and state um, action. So that was another argument, but Again, I'm gonna um, allow you to think about some other arguments I might be thinking about. Please, please, please make sure you're taking as many notes as you can. Um, and we're gonna finish this debate with a 2AC, I mean 2AR, which is the last um, constructive and this is the last um, part of the debate. I, can I also get a little bit of time? <laughs> no, no problem, no problem, no problem. Um, students who are watching, I'm gonna keep my flow just because I think this is a good example of arguments you'll be using um, in future debates as we get prepared for some of these um, BAUDL tournaments and some of these tournaments you wanna participate um, nationally. Um, the other thing too here is, um, again, I probably won't be giving what I thought about this debate and who won, um, but we can definitely talk about that at each practice. And I definitely want you all to think about it on your own terms before, because I don't want to give you my thoughts and then you just take it around with it. I really want you all to think about it for yourselves. And then we can talk about what I actually thought at each individual practice once you all have provided me your ballots and your, um, your reasons for decision after your class sessions or your debate practices. you. First, our perms mean we access the disad and counterplan solvency. All impacts and all solvency is on the app side here. You have no choice but to vote for the affirmative if you buy our perms. How do we outweigh? Extend our Schaefer 18 card here. Any framework that attempts to solve by prioritizing human needs fails. Extend our Neville uh, 18 card. We solve for indigenous rights too. Extinction and nuclear war outweigh. Will it be easy to solve? No, but it is a managed way out, not immediate because we don't do these things because they're easy. We do them because they are hard. Vote for the affirmative. On to the state's counter plan. Extend our perms. The NEG has the burden of competition when they present an alternative counter plan. Our perm is the only challenge the app can make to the infinite negative arguments that a negative team can make. We have proven they are not mutually exclusive, the plan and the counter plan text. And if the time frame firm destroys the net benefit, then you must vote be for the affirmative. We are talking about six months down the line. They didn't even ask for a time frame uh, number. We're just allowing states to take the lead, which was their concern in the first place. They conceded the time frame perm solves. Their only response to time frame perm is theory. If you don't buy the theory, then we went on this alone, onto theory. Don't buy this, it's not a voter. You have to give the affirmative space to challenge the legitimacy of counterplans. Timeframe perms are not new or something they had no way to expect. Our evidence demonstrates state and federal cooperation. So we didn't drop the no literature argument despite the fact that they claim that. We presented timeframe literature via our cooperative federalism card. This is our Bosworth 20 card extended here. Timeframe perms are just phased plans. You've never heard of a plan that had more than one step? Of course you have, this isn't new. Uh, so don't, they're not gonna win on uh, theory alone, our time frame perm solves for the counter plan and the federalism decide, which was all of their impacts, which means that the only way you can vote is for the affirmative. Extend our Hanshaw 17 card. As my partner said, our evidence is specific to the environment and water law. Their evidence is about criminal law. States 
states and federal governments are used to cooperating on environmental law all the time, which means you prefer, prefer our evidence, which means that federal cooperation solves. Extend our Berman 19 card. They claim that our evidence doesn't presume radical change. Neither does theirs. They concede that it's unprecedented, which means that that doesn't, it's not relevant. But at least our evidence is specific to environmental and water law, which is why you should prefer our evidence because the it is the only useful predictor in solvency and impacts. How are we going to predict how things would happen if we're not using relevant literature? This is our preemption evidence. They said we didn't read more cards here. We don't have to. Our evidence outweighs and is more relevant, gives relevant examples, which means that you prefer us. Since the state a federal government is going to preempt the states anyway, you need both of them to solve, which means you vote up for affirmative. Also extend our Shank 21 card. They don't say who solves on federal land. I'm saying nobody but the federal government does. They conceded that federal land is the most in need of this regulation in our Shank 21 card. This leaves that their counter plan leaves out. They can't access solvency without our plan. And finally, there's no evidence about current international perception. They're just making this as an articulated argument. Obviously, Biden improved our international cooperation, so don't prefer this evidence. Under the federalism, this ad. None of their evidence presumes natural water resources. Ours does. One guard or two 2005 specifically talks about water regulation. This is a common and perfectly legal use of the Commerce Clause. There is no link. Also, it's not unique. Extend our Bosworth 20 card. This gives an example of an interaction between California and the federal government EPA over environmental regulation. If that didn't trigger their impacts, what will? Extend our Sechi and McDonald 19 card. They concede that the states will not enforce equally. Our evidence gives a specific example of a state violating water regulations, ignoring science, and harming their neighboring states with their political posturing. Federal government is key. They cannot solve this without us. Also, finally, extend in our perms, we win on this since we access their solvency anyway. Finally, on to case. They conceded our Neville 19 card. They're claiming that we conceded the Wilson, but we didn't. They never actually addressed our Neville 19 card at all. We turn this indigenous rights problem. They cannot solve for indigenous dispossession in the state's counter plan or in the status quo. We can. This is another impact that you're going to vote for the affirmative plan on. They try to claim it turns our whole case. Well, unless you vote for us, you don't actually solve for indigenous dispossession. Uh, we didn't drop water wars. They did. We extended it in our 2AC and we extended it in the one way R. When they are, their block arguments against water wars were brand new. Do not buy this. If they try to claim that we conceded things which we didn't, you certainly cannot vote for them on something they actually conceded. Extend Chilton, Jamil, and DeVito. These all are evidence is newer and more relevant. What if, if anybody is going to go to war over anything in the modern age when we risk nuclear destruction, what is more likely than people literally dying of dehydration? Uh, we also, we solve for environmental destruction. Extend our Rockstrom, four, Rockstrom 14 card from the 2AC. The scale of this is immense. You must vote for us. I don't even need to give you magnitude, time frame, and probability because all impacts are on the aft flow, but here they are anyway. Magnitude, there's nothing bigger than extinction via climate change. That is what happens when rivers disappear. B, time frame, we went on this too. Degrowth is happening right now. Extend our Bonatti 18 card. And then finally, onto probability. Degrowth is happening right now, whether we want it to or not. We can let it destroy our economy, our environment, our, environment, our indigenous populations, or we we can pass the affirmative plan with the perm, which is the best version of solvency you're going to get in this round, and that's why you're going to vote for the affirmative. All right. Well, that was debate. Thank you all. I'm, I'm really so happy to have every one of you participate in this demo debate. I'm glad that um, you all were able to make this happen. That's why I rushed home, um, because my kids, our kids, me and Amy's kids need to see this um, fleshed out, and they need definitely to see um, what types of options they have to emulate. So I appreciate you all for stepping out and showing the kids how to best um, be able to, you know, approach their upcoming debates. And the only th I'll just give um, just it's not really a reason for decision, but I'll give two things I was thinking about on both sides. Um, for the affirmative, I thought it was weird how you all like didn't like like, how do you measure water wars? Like, I would say that there are water wars happening right now. So I think you can let them get away with them saying that, you know, that you don't have access to water wars because I think that you do. Like, the question is how big are these water wars? Are they like at the extreme that they are like, people are, like France is fighting the America for water? No, but I do think there is like an existence of water wars happening in the status quo, because they wouldn't be talking about that in the negative, like later on, as Amy said, in the 2AR. Um, and then the other thing too, for the negative that I thought, just thought was a, um, a weird thing for me is like, um, even though the kids um, are not at that level of theory, I just, um, maybe it's me, but I just don't think theory is needed all the time. And when you're getting down to the theory, I just thought maybe there was more, more, instead of getting to the theory, you could spend time in other parts of the debate that really mattered. 
um because i didn't think theory, theory was necessary despite it being a, not even just the fact that it's a demo debate but like just content wise i didn't think theory was um if you go if i kind of aired like amy's like 2ar arguments on theory like i just didn't think they mattered to me like that wasn't even a part of the debate but outside of those two things that like i think the debate was well i just um i, I kind of didn't make my decision yet i probably would have to look at my flows a little bit bit more but those are the two things that i thought each side could have done a little bit more better Thanks, Nathino. Yeah, I definitely panicked when he asked me about current examples of water wars. <laughs> yeah, I was like, girl, I, I didn't you can just lie. You like, said, I can't give it a example. Flint, so. And I would have been okay with that, just as an evaluator. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. That was a panic reaction. So, sorry. <laughs> no, but uh, again, like, as I'm not going to give too much because, again, I'm probably going to talk more about this stuff in each individual class. Um, but yeah, did, did anyone want to share anything about what they like about debate or any other things that, you know, you want to share with the students about how debate has helped you or about this debate specifically before we um, end this um, Zoom call? Good luck this season. Thank y'all for hosting this. Good luck. Thank you. And if you want this copy, because I know you guys are program managers and programs yourself, if you want a copy, please let me know. Of course, Amy, you can have a copy. Sophie, you don't probably care to have a copy. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I, I thank you all um, so, so, so very much. And also, I love you guys so, so much. I know I tell y'all I love you. I probably, Amy, you was probably the first time you've heard me say I love you, but I love you all. And I really, Thank you again. My kids, they're not going to appreciate it, but I do. <laughs> so just thank you. Thank you. Kate, thank you for helping me with my coaching because now I have more content and more stuff to be able to provide to my students. So I really appreciate that because a lot of these kids are like, they, they need to get these fundamentals. I'm trying to get it in their butt to get these fundamentals. Um, but I have something prepared for them once they get the fundamentals down. So I, I appreciate that. And yeah, thank you again. Thanks, Bethina. See y'all. I'm sure I'll see everybody watching this at some point. See y'all soon. There you go. Adios.